friends. We are here on the Lazarus match. These are our losers of the first two series looking to stay alive in ASL Vanguard League in Group C. And we are on Echo down here on the bottom right representing Team Gravity and the Protoss Nation. It is our purple player, Poison. <laughs> yes, indeed, a shout out to our top left hero, our grandma. He loves you so much. Representing Knights of Ashfire and his grandma, it is the Green Terran Chloe. <laughs> and Poison apparently loves her dogs more than Chloe loves his grandma. That's a bold statement. That is a bold, bold statement. Well, I don't know. Poison might just love her dogs so much, it's like uncomfortable for people. Like, they meet Poison, she's like, do you want to see pictures of my dogs forever? Like, I know those people. And I, I mean, I said shout out to Team Gravity also. Uh, I mean, while we're at it, shout outs galore. Shout outs to all of you guys for tuning in. Shout out to the USA, best country in the world. Am I right? Probably not. But anyway, also Canada is cool too. I like hockey. Shout out to Obama. I mean, shout outs everywhere. Shout out to ASL for doing this. It's awesome. If you guys ever want to compete in the ASL, uh, we have our website, ascendedstarcraft.com. Uh, shout out to Saber, our tireless observer and organizer of the ASL. But yeah, go to go to aslstarcraft.com. You'll find all of our social media links. ASL Starcraft is on Twitter, Facebook. I don't think we have a Pinterest, but we should probably make that and pin lots of pictures of pretty fingernails and food because that's definitely related to Starcraft. Uh, but also, if you want, if you like what we're doing, if you have fun watching or playing in the ASL, feel free to uh, scroll down a little bit on the Twitch page, and there are links to our Patreon. Uh, we're trying to get to $300 on Patreon a month in order to have free ASL for everyone, which would be super, super awesome as we see a Reaper come in and start to poke away at our Protoss base, gets one probe kill, and then it's going to get chased away by some probes and a Mothership Core. Uh, but also, if you like ASL, feel free to subscribe to the Twitch channel. That'd be awesome. We're adding more and more cool subscriber swag for that. Uh... Or if you if if you're not cool with that stuff, that's that's fine, man. Like we're just happy that you're here tuning in. Uh, so just hit the follow button. That's free and easy and awesome of you to do that. But also we have our YouTube page for all our vods. So if you missed any of the other games from this league or any other league, they'll they're on Ascended Starcraft uh, at YouTube, and all of our vods get posted there. Prime on down, and that, that that's prime like. All the pro players, awesome guys, challengers, GM, and masters. And this league is diamond and low masters. Then we have defender, which is pro, uh, platinum and gold. We've got so much going on in ASL these days. It's it's really actually pretty sick. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm going to actually start talking about this game here. Is uh, Chloe sort of looking like Vespasian, uh, building a barracks and then a factory in the starport, except Chloe got a other command center in between all of that stuff. So, I mean, on one hand, pretty Vespasian like because he goes for mostly one on one ish style but very very non Vespasian like because there's currently more than one Terran town hall building on the map I think I've only seen that in a Vespasian game a handful of times and right before I played Vespasian I studied a lot of Vespasian games and yeah shout out to him for uh, advancing first place in the group shout out to my friend Tim Drenok for casting with me in the beginning of the night I'm really sorry his internet bugged out and wasn't able to continue I hope you guys aren't too annoyed by my voice yet. We're going to have a little while longer of it to listen to. I apologize if it if it bothers you. I hope it doesn't. I'm doing my best. Yeah, Chloe, macro it up here. Preparing a nice double Widowmine drop. Uh, I don't know if he's going to bring any Marines with it. Maybe he's just going to attack with them? Interesting. Uh, going for the front with Marines, the back with the Widowmines maybe. Uh, but Poison really getting her macro going now. Throwing down the Robo Bay right before her Warp Gate finishes up. Uh, just uh, about 20 seconds here on warp gate, and she's gonna have three warp gates of production plus a robo facility. But she's got observers out in the map, sees the marines in the middle of the map moving out. I don't know if she scouted the medevac headed around the right, but the observers definitely see what's going on here. This one camped right outside the natural, sees these marines coming down. Her natural nexus is done, so she's gonna be able to overcharge that and deny these marines no problem. But the real problem is the two widow mines headed in the north of her main base. It's, the marines move in, might actually stunt the mothership core, they're gonna kill it. Oh man, just 
barely escaping. Oh, not quite. One shot left on him from a Marine there as the, the Widow Mines get dropped in the main. They're burrowing, 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 looking for kills. There's five, five probe kills. Excellent. No reaction from Poison on the Widow Mines, and that's how you lose that many probes. But most of the Marines went down there, so this attack is kind of kind of done for now. Marines aren't going to be able to get a whole lot done. That's not nearly enough to fight against what uh, Poison can produce here, even though she lost quite a few uh, units here. Their observer being pulled back now, so she can clean up these Widow Mines. Stalker's moving out of position. She might actually be able to clean these up before they reload and fire again. Uh, as they both reload, oh, getting, oh, and actually took out the Observer! The splash damage took out the Observer, and that is so painful. She's already started Colossus production, she can't derail that to get a, uh, another Observer. As the Marines get dropped in the main, start targeting the Stalkers with the uh, Medivac support. They're doing pretty good, as Poison actually uh, A moves her own Assimilator. That is trouble town there. Uh, not sure where Chloe's from, but I know for Poison, she's in Eastern Time, so this is quite late for her. We might see a, a few more of those tiny, tiny little misclicks tend to happen. As the Widowmine reloads and gets two more kills, that's four kills on that Widowmine. And that, that is so, so painful here, uh, as we see the Widowmines continue to pick up more and more kills. But she does have a decent two-base economy. She got a, uh, an idle probe international she needs to fix there. Uh, that'll be nice. So Chloe actually establishing his third base. Um, and he's going to be moving into a really strong standard Terran mid-game. Actually throwing down a second starport uh, after his third and fifth barracks complete and the add-ons complete. Uh, rounding out his bio with stim, combat shields, and uh, concussive shell all at the same time. He's actually oversaturating the natural now with STVs. Uh, is that third is a little bit behind. Poison just trying to macro up, trying to macro up, but she's behind in army supply and behind in workers. Those little mines did just too much damage now she's trying to get a lot of tech here goes for twilight council into dark shrine to try and recover some ground here uh as a scan right on top of the terran army uh cleans up that observer and Chloe getting ready to to, to main art some probes over from his or scv excuse me from his second to his third base he's gonna be on a nice healthy three base economy probably gonna shoot up to a a, a nice healthy number of barracks up from five and with uh the ebay Pumping out one upgrade at a time. I uh, want to throw down an armory and a second eBay here soon to get into the full, uh, beautiful mid-game Terran upgrade mode as he pre preps a double drop here at 11.45 in this game. Poison getting her economy back to uh, a decent two-base position. Going for that nice gateway explosion before she takes her third. Uh, as you can't really afford to take your third, uh, strategically speaking, not necessarily economically speaking, until you add on these extra gateways to be able to defend against this aggression from the Terran that we see coming out. This two medevac stuff is exactly why you add on those gateways right now. So the Terran can produce so much. And there's the second eBay and the armory on the way from the Terran as it, uh, Chloe starts the plus one armory. He's going to probably start plus two attack here soon as uh, Poison throws down a pylon in the top right, pylon on the bottom left, three Dark Temple getting warped in. Uh, Hallucinated Phoenix comes into scout, sees there's no turrets down. There's no, oh, they get thrown down just now in the main. There's a little mine in the main as well to defend it. Oh, turret in the natural, and now the third, these Dark Templar need to be on the move. They're just hanging out there. They got warped in like 30 seconds ago. Poison, poison, poison. Oh, we need to get those doing damage. By the time they get into any of the bases, they're going to be missile turrets now. And that hurts. I mean, she scouted that there was no missile turrets, and now she's going to move in, and there are. That sucks. The, the army moved out of position. These Dark Templar are going to get a couple kills. But I mean, she really needs like like 15, 20 SCV kills for this to really be worth it. As the Dark Templar moves its way into the main, but there's a turret in the production as well. Chloe is just bulletproof right now. Uh, four Vikings at a time. This Colossus production is going to get totally shut down. Uh, poison researching Blink. 2-2 uh, on the way. And she's doing well right now. Uh, the Protoss position is not awful. Problem is, it's just not as good as the Terran position. As her third is just now getting started, as the third for Terran is well established, and the main is already starting to mine out for the Terran, so he's gonna be taking a fourth base here shortly. Uh, might have some trouble with that with the DTs out on the map, uh, but he's adding on three more barracks out here in the front of his base uh, to just really ramp up his production and just start uh, pummeling the Pronos into submission here. And he's leaving army units back to defend in the main. He's just, like I said, playing totally bulletproof. He's got a few SCVs just idling here where they built turrets, that sort of thing. Out of Colossus, just kind of 
lackadaisically following the observer rally point on the middle of the map. Uh, Poison uh, wisely catching that before she lost it completely. But this army is really dangerous. There's nine Vikings out here. They don't have plus one attack yet. That's only about a third of the way down. So this uh, Vikings are going to be fighting without it. So the Colossus only at 1-1 one, one currently. 2-2, two, two, about two thirds of the way down. This engagement is going to be very dangerous for Poison. There's only three medevacs here with this force and a lot of Vikings. But uh, Poison's army is uh, very vulnerable. There's four Colossi, but these these Vikings are just going to absolutely annihilate. They are queued up on the Colossi. Is Poison moving in, trying to take out all this bio. Three Colossi go down. The Manor Mules get dropped. The Manor Mules coming down now. All Poison has left is Stalkers. She does have Blink, but that is just simply not enough against this many Vikings and Marauders that uh, now have won one as the... Oh, dancing the Manor Mules even. Holy cow. Chloe just showing off here. Poison says cute. She is not happy. Probably not happy. Chloe throws out the, the less than three. And as Protoss' 2-2 two -two finishes up, but I think Poison is down and out. She warps in a bunch of Zealots here, but the Zealots don't have charge. The Stalkers have Blink. This is not the situation you need to be in. As Chloe uh, A moves his way to the victory here. Uh, as he's just ransacking the natural to Protoss. Very, very, very well played by him in this game. Just uh, powering through here. That was just really, really well done. Love it. Love the solid Terran play out of him. Uh, Poison just needs to uh, kind of regain her composure, use these last few minutes in this game where, where she's just kind of chilling and uh, get her head back into it and take a strong game too. Uh, she's definitely set herself up for success here. Uh, she didn't get outplayed that hard. It's just that the Widow Mines really set her behind. She had to invest in her economy or reinvest in her economy. And that's game. gentlemen we are here on coda this is the second map of our losers match tonight in group c one of these players is almost ready to go home and one is ready to move on to continue fighting for their life in this tournament on the left of coda the northwest position it is the knights of Ashfire fighting for his grandma the green terran chloe he's up 1-0 against our player in the southeast position representing team gravity the purple protoss poison down 0-1 she really needs to bring this back to, to have any hope of moving on to the round of 16. Uh, both these players would need to win an additional series against dreamatos in the final match of the night but poison just needs to focus on this one map for now uh, as both players just continuing to open up standard uh, Poison just crowding out her probes. Normal, normal, normal on all fronts. Uh, and Chloe just going for the one racks. Probably going to get a Reaper. Yep, as soon as he has gas to afford it. And Poison scouting out her base for anything cheeky. But this SCV is just getting a, a nice full scout out here as Poison goes for the Cybernetics Core. Uh, actually walling off the bottom right side of her base. So actually, that's nice so that Reapers and SCVs and things can't really... Uh, meander around in a 360 degree pattern so this this SCV is actually on a circuitous uh, patrol pattern here actually has to go uh, all the way around clockwise all the way around counterclockwise all the way around and around and around and poison tucking her scouting probe up in the north here unbeknownst to our Terran player is just now sending out his Reaper across the map to scout and poison sends out another probe uh, maybe to scout for something I'm not, I'm not sure uh thought maybe for there for a second she was just gonna try and trick the scv into saying like hey this is my actual scouting probe my other probe is nowhere to be seen hand waving hand waving but the reaper comes in it's gonna totally snipe that probe out there as it is exposed mothership core being chrono boosted uh reaper probably gonna be able to get another kill but it's actually firing on the assimilator probes that's not what he needs to do gets one more kill some probes trying to chase it away and mothership core is out it's gonna deny that reaper any more chances for damage as uh, Stalker gets Chrono boosted as well. Poison, uh, just smack run up. I think she just needs to really buckle down and get a little bit better execution this game, and she'll be fine. I feel like both these players are on pretty even food footing, macro-wise. Uh, but Chloe actually throwing out a second and third racks before any tech. So this is going to be an aggressive opening. 
Uh, unless we see him play this out exactly like he did against Dreamatos, he did precisely this build and ended up using it completely defensively. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how he plays it out this time, uh, throwing down the factory just now. So judging by the last game that he played this way on Vani against Dreamatos in his first match, uh, if he goes to that factory, he'll go into a starport uh, and then get uh, Stim and then hit with like one Metamac and Stim uh, at a slightly earlier than normal timing. So uh, a little bit earlier than that 10-11 uh, mid-game timing that you normally see and feel from Terran with the Stim and Combat Shield Metamac uh, when all those come out in sync. So it's just going to be around like nine minutes that you hit with Stim and oh Metamac. So you get the, you catch the Protoss off guard sometimes. When they're, when they're playing a little bit greedy, but Poison is playing safe and should be able to hold this off. Like I said, if she just focuses on her execution, does it well, like I'm sure she doesn't practice all the time, then she'll be good. In theory, this is this is a good build against what Chloe is doing, but when uh, you're being an aggressive player, the, the nice thing is, especially at this level of play, if your opponent makes mistakes they can just outright lose the game against an aggressive opening. Uh, and that, that is something you can rely upon, whereas like a pro player in WCS, GSL, SSL, can't really rely on that. Um, we, they do make mistakes, but not nearly consistently enough. In this level, you can say like, hey, I can't really get away with this build all the time on ladder. But in a tournament setting, in a best of three, I mean, um, you might bust it out because sometimes your opponent's not going to get their photon overcharge exactly when they need it. You know, they might miss micro the mothership core. They might miss that crucial force field, you know. But Poison uh, hasn't really gotten a scout out of what's going on in the Terran base. So she doesn't know uh, how aggressive it's going to be. The Observer's on the way now, and it should identify that. Uh, she's got two Observers out now. Should get out an Immortal to be able to hold this. Typically, you get, like, another Observer and just have... Uh, lots and lots of map awareness while you bank up that gas and wait for robotics beta finish to start your Colossus production. Poison getting her stalkers in position to defend any uh, drops coming in, but her observer sees the Bioforce coming out now. Uh, walking right under that observer, she should, should be completely aware of this. And uh, two minute acts started, and they're going to get over to the other side of the map right after about the nine minute mark. Poison continuing the Chrono Boost probes. Uh, needs to be prepared for aggression here. She's actually throwing down the Twilight Council, probably going to go into DTs after that, just like last game. Uh, in theory, that's a good opening, but she needs to be prepared for the aggression here. She hasn't repositioned her stalkers. Here she goes now, and she sees this bio move in. Preemptive photon overcharge, and this bio almost moves into range. And now it, it takes one shot, backs off. Uh, once the medevacs are out, though, it should be able to, to try, at least, to tear the Protoss apart uh, left to right, left to right, in that Maru-ish style of uh, TVP, where you just go um, balls out bio production and try and tear the Protoss apart. Uh, Multi-pronged harass uh, and excellent engagements. We'll see. I, I don't think Chloe is Maru, so I'm not sure if that's going to work out. Maru kind of plays that style that says like, hey guys, I'm the best player in the world. Suck it. You can't play like this unless you're me. So... I mean, good luck trying to learn and steal my builds because there's no way you can execute them. We'll see. Uh, Chloe does like to play that more standard with the Vikings and everything too, which Maru generally skips. Moves in again. A second photo of charge is ready to... Uh, Militia Core goes in and does that. The the Colossus does not have range yet, so it gets sniped by the Marauders pretty easily. Uh, and range isn't actually even started for Colossi. Uh, so Poison is in a dangerous, dangerous position here. Dark Shrine is on the way, another Colossus is on the way, but the Natural Nexus falls to this Bio Force, and that is absolutely dangerous. Mothership Core going to go down too. There's no Force Field on the ramp there, and I'm really worried for Poison here. This might just be Checkmate. As the Zells get warped in, untouched right behind the Bio, that's exactly what she needs, but there's so many Marines here with Stim uh, that I think this, this Hammer Blow in the early game might just be it from Chloe. Uh, Colossus is going to try and pop out here get something done but it doesn't have range and there's no gateway units here to support uh, it does so much damage to this bio so much damage to that bio wow colossus are strong it lives with seven hp cleans up everything gets nine kills in like four shots damn colossus are awesome but uh poison is so thoroughly doomed here i'm afraid it's just she has her dark shrine and that's like a about the only thing she has. Uh, she can afford to warp in maybe a Dark Templar, but instead uh, uses her gas elsewhere. 
And now has no second base is really low on probes. It's 15 workers to 51 SEVs, 22 Protoss army supply to 50 of Terran. As Terran moves in with five more medevacs and a huge ball of bio, comparatively. Seven marauders, we got nine marines. This is just scary. As the scan goes down, his main cleans up the Dark Templar, and I'm afraid that might have been Poison's last hope. With the two orbitals down, Missile Turret's coming up in response. Uh, still no range for the Colossi, so these are very, very vulnerable, and I'm afraid this might be it for poison and I'm also afraid it might be a symptom of the fact that where poison lives it is currently 2.30 in the morning so unfortunately poison is on the ropes uh, taking heavy heavy blows from the Terran players he goes for the doom drop picking up his entire army five medevacs unloading into the main base of the Protoss assailing the mineral line these Colossus valiantly gonna fight this but this bio is really spread out when these Colossus get targeted down weak one with all those kills goes down there's the gg from poison she is eliminated from the asl and chloe moves on for the rematch against dreamatos thanks for watching the video please subscribe to support the asl by hitting the button now